With a proper understanding of full flow basic principles, we can now review advanced full flow practices and how reducing restrictions in the recovery setup will greatly reduce recovery times. The easiest and most effective ways to begin increasing recovery speed are to remove all controllable restrictions like Schrader valve cores in the system access ports, core depressors from the hoses, small diameter hoses, and traditional diagnostic manifolds. Schrader valves are primarily designed for temporary connections when performing system diagnostics and as a safety mechanism to contain refrigerant within a system. However, when left in place during the refrigerant recovery process, these valves are a significant flow restriction. This limitation is due to their narrow passageway, which isn't intended for high volume transfer. Furthermore, Schrader valves inadvertently function as a metering device during refrigerant recovery. This unintended action forces the refrigerant to change phase, which in turn increases the discharge temperature and pressure. These increased discharge temperatures and pressures are particularly detrimental as they can lead to premature overheating of the recovery cylinder, posing risks of inefficiency and a delayed recovery process. With the Schrader valves removed, core depressors in the hoses become unnecessary. These depressors, originally intended to open the Schrader valve, serve no purpose when the valves are absent. More importantly, they introduce additional restriction points in the refrigerant flow path. Restrictions from core depressors left in hoses can occur on both the input and output sides of the recovery setup, impeding the smooth flow of the refrigerant and potentially damaging the recovery machine if liquid hammering were to occur. By eliminating Schrader valves and core depressors, the refrigerant can flow more freely, enhancing the speed of the recovery process and maintaining the refrigerant's initial state when exiting the system. The refrigerant hoses and manifolds are commonly overlooked when trying to achieve unrestricted flow during refrigerant recovery. Replacing these normally restrictive components with tools made specifically for recovery can further reduce recovery times. The traditional quarter-inch refrigerant hose often has a smaller internal diameter of 316 inches to slow down the flow of liquid refrigerant and to mitigate refrigerant losses during system diagnostics. By using 3 8 inch diameter hoses for the input and output of the recovery machine, you're allowing for optimal flow while still abiding by EPA de minimis guidelines. 3 8 inch hoses give more internal room for the refrigerant molecules to flow, reducing molecular collisions and friction. By reducing friction, you're reducing heat buildup, making refrigerant easier to pump into the cylinder. With 3 8 inch hoses deployed, the next restrictive component to replace is the manifold. Manifolds were traditionally used to connect multiple hoses to a system for system diagnostic purposes. Manifolds, although commonly used during recovery, have many leak points along with inherently unreliable performance and are prone to turbulent and extremely restrictive flow, which we will expand on momentarily. When wanting to increase the number of hoses connected to the system for refrigerant recovery, using a single machine fitting is the most reliable option. However, not all fittings are created equal. Like manifolds, T-fittings fall victim to turbulent flow by creating flow paths directly in opposition to each other. With a Y-fitting, the flow paths are able to merge together seamlessly, forming smooth, laminar flow, which reduces friction and maintains the refrigerant's initial velocity as it travels to the recovery machine. Combined together, the use of 3 8 inch hoses and a Y-fitting offer the most unrestrictive refrigerant recovery-specific setup. When setting up for a full-flow recovery, the main goal is to recover liquid refrigerant rather than vapor, as stated in a previous video. To do this effectively, we've established the importance of removing restrictions from the system to the recovery cylinder. However, the recovery cylinder itself can become a restriction of its own if it is used improperly. Using the vapor port of a recovery cylinder with the valve fully open is crucial during direct refrigerant recovery for several reasons. Primarily, the vapor port is the least restricted port, allowing refrigerant to flow freely into the full volume of the cylinder. This less restrictive flow contrasts greatly with the liquid port, which leads into a narrow dip tube that significantly restricts flow. This restriction can lead to liquid hammering, a phenomenon where rapid changes in liquid flow cause pressure surges that are often heard as a knocking from the recovery machine. 
Such surges risk damaging the recovery machine and impede the flow of refrigerant significantly. Therefore, utilizing the vapor port with the valve fully open ensures a smoother, safer, and more efficient recovery process. With this new understanding of advanced full flow techniques, we can begin to apply this knowledge in practical applications and really understand when and how to utilize the skills learned in this series.